Tonight, uh, NXT. Tomorrow, Dynamite. Adam Cole and Britt Baker versus Orange Cassidy and Chris Stadlander. CM Punk versus Sean Spears. Sting and Darby Allen versus The Acclaimed. Serena Deeb versus Sky Blue. Lee Johnson and Brock Anderson versus FTR. Cody Rhodes returns. House of Black versus Varsity Blondes. And the return of John Moxley. Eight segments announced. Wait a second. You just announced mostly a bunch of matches, not enough segments for the show. I mean, isn't that what wrestling's all about? Oh, now we got segments next segments. week. Well, next week we have mini segments. We have got uh, we have got an IQ test between the Alpha Academy and Riddle and Randy Orton. We have got the birthday celebration of Miz and Maurice. I'm totally turning the corner on this feud, by the way. Well, that yeah, it's a it's a should. waste of Miz, but like, or not a waste of Miz. I mean, it's actually good for Miz. It's a waste of Edge, but I mean, if we get past, it's a total waste of Edge. This feud has been great so far. I don't know. There's another way to look at that, which is that that man has given his body and a lot of work. If he's having a lot of fun, I'll take it, just because everybody involved is good at what they do. These people can't believe there's going to be an IQ test. Yeah, just wait. <laughs> I'll do the raw report in a minute. And we have also got a weigh-in for a match with no weight limits six days prior to the match <laughs> between Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley. We, Much like UFC, we want to give you plenty of time to rehydrate. So <laughs> that's what's happening here. Hey, you know, a lot of people don't know this. There's a 265-pound weight limit uh, for, for UFC. I think it's still that number. 285, I think, for the NCAA. So there actually is a weight limit for heavyweights. It is not unlimited, unlike pro wrestling, where it's unlimited. But I guess this takes the place of a contract signing, right? Hey, listen, I'm, I'm all for AEW has done the weigh-in. It's it's ridiculous, but it's fine. It's obviously a ceremonial way. As long as Big Show's but not it's working better the scale. than another stupid contract signing much prefer a way in hopefully it's a shoot way in brock's like 292 pounds or something like that <laughs> yeah for real he looks gigantic while we weigh in paul Heyman, i want to see that for uh, brock and roman when he comes down to it again i just hope they don't have him strip nude and put him behind a towel because the people oh, no. on the opposite the hard camera are gonna have quite a show i don't think we need that listen we're gonna go to a break everybody and we're gonna be back in a moment we're gonna do the raw report for those of you wondering about the IQ test, I'll tell you all about it. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Uh, Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Thank God I'm back to do a full Raw report. Mm. I heard you had a lackluster, subpar Raw report last week. That's, That's the rumor not true. I heard. The people in the chat said it was one of the best ones that they ever heard. The chat doesn't know what they want. Listen to you. You're starting to sound like that guy who looks like his face is falling off and who gargles on razor blades. And oh, I mean my God. Mike Sempervivi. Do you know how many times Vince has come out on TV and I've said, this guy looked 100 years old and you go, oh, I have to say this. I have to say something about his age because, and what he looks like. Now you say his face is falling off and he looks like he's gargling razor blades. You were participating That's in much, ageism. Much, you were participating in ageism. What is that when you ageism. said his face looks like it's falling off? He would come on and you would start getting uncomfortable. In fact, I think you actually used that on World. He made you, you made you uncomfortable because I never said old. he made me uncomfortable yes yes you did I said you... he looked 200 years old it... which actually I was giving him a compliment you said he's too basically he's too old to be on TV you, you that's what you said brother and it's he not used about to say being... Hulk Hogan was too old to be on TV when he was 40 look I'm he'd not tell saying... you he's too old to be on TV he would tell you that wrong there is nobody Betty White proved it there is nobody too old to be on TV if they're good at what they do. And last night's Raw, the only thing I can really say about Was he good at what it, he did last night? No, he was not. Thank you. And that's the whole thing with <laughs> that show last night. That's my only takeaway from it is they were facing off against the wild card game. And it felt like they threw in the towel. And the big takeaway is the thespianism on this show and the dialogue that is written for these people. I know it is completely shooting a dead horse when it comes to WWE and when it comes to their dialogue and when it comes to the fact that these are the people that brag about wanting to make movies, yet any time they actually have dialogue, it's not what any normal person would ever say. Even inside their universe, none of this makes any sense with the characters that are involved. It's all a big fat mess. And as you go through this, I'm 
sure you'll probably point out how bad a lot of this is, including with Vince McMahon, whose bits have become, I mean, almost, they're almost like parodies of skits that Vince used to do. I mean, they really, really are. Well, let me get this over with then. Do it. First, we have a segment with Becky, Dewdrop, Bianca, and Liv, which leads to a match. See, I could have wasted time telling you about it, but there was nothing to it. So it's Becky Lynch and Dewdrop teaming together as they will face off at the Royal Rumble against Bianca and Liv. There was no explanation as to why these people are teaming with each other. And so the match goes three minutes. Becky hits Liv with her finisher. She goes to cover. Her partner, Dewdrop, breaks up the pin. Dewdrop tries to make a cover, but the ref's a stickler. No, you're not legal. So Dewdrop has to get up, walk over, drag Becky to the corner, get out of the ring, tag, get back in the ring, squash Liv, and then pin her. So Liv, I mean, you know, if this match was 2 minutes and 50 seconds, she was on her back after getting hit with a finish for 50 full seconds. So for those of you waiting for Liv Morgan to win the title... Keep waiting. She couldn't be any further under. The only reason that I'm going to give Liv Morgan a lifeline in my world is because there are still fans out there that believe in her and that still like her, and it's very easy to do because she's very believable and likable. But with the dialogue they've given her, with the positions they've put her in, which have just gotten her way under, and then you had the big botch with Becky at the pay-per-view where, you know, why is Liv, why do we care about Liv going after this? Because she continues to lose. I mean, look, this is how Dewdrop got into her title match was the fact that she's basically lost and it doesn't even make any sense that Dewdrop and Becky Lynch would have been teaming last night as such a cohesive unit anyway so it's just stupid we had a bunch of backstage segments Reggie wants advice from Edge against Omos Edge hey listen you want to talk about backstage skits being bad Edge is not involved in them Edge was awesome on this show Reggie wants advice and Edge is like oh man you know you do all these flips and all this great stuff I mean and Reggie goes so I can win Edge goes hell no you can't win and then Beth whacks him, so Reggie's all sad. And Edge was right, by the way. And then Edge and Damian Priest have a conversation. Damian wants advice on how to win the Royal Rumble. When did they become friends? Edge blows him off. But they're both baby faces. And then Kevin Owens goes up to Priest, and he wants a nice, clean wrestling match later on tonight. I'm trying to get through this show, everybody. The KO show with Seth Rollins, uh, the gist of it is... Kevin Owens wants to win the Rumble. Rollins wants to win the championship. Kevin Owens wants the two of them for the belt at WrestleMania. Rollins didn't seem like he was down with that idea, but they're supposed to pretend like they're friends. So uh, that was that. And then Damian uh, Priest comes out. I don't know if you guys know this or not. I'm sure you don't because they never made a, a comment about it. Damian Priest has been on the main roster for 12 months, and he's never lost a singles match ever. Like, he's Tatanka. Never lost undefeated a streak of one year well they never bring it to your attention so you probably didn't even notice when kevin owens pinned him tonight in a 10 minute match clean i guess it was kind of clean it actually was clean kevin owens uh, acts like his knee is hurt uh, the referee goes to check on it damian priest who doesn't want to be a stupid baby face like he's trying he goes i don't believe it referee get him up that's not real uh, but regardless, he's distracted, and Kevin Owens boots him and hits him with a stunner and pins him. First singles loss in one year for Damian Priest. Not even a story on this show. Nikki Ash promo. Uh, we had the Alpha Academy graduation ceremony, which actually Chad Gable was great in this segment. Yeah, yeah. He gives the uh, the diploma to Otis, and then Riddle comes out in a cap and gown. Riddle's acting all stupid as usual. Gable tells him he's an idiot. He doesn't even know what the word rematch means. Riddle makes a, a weed reference. Everyone cheers. And so finally, Gable says, listen, you're an idiot. You want a rematch for the titles? Fine. If you can win an academic aptitude test next week. So next week, I don't know if it's Riddle. They didn't really explain this very well. But there, there's going to be an IQ test of some sort either with Riddle or with Riddle and Orton, and it's either a contest or it's not a contest. Otis was selling it like it was a contest because he was afraid he was going to lose, but I think it might just be that Orton and Riddle have to pass this test. But regardless, there's going to be an intelligent segment on the show next week. <laughs> Cannot wait. Then we had Finn Balor. Well, first we had uh, Austin Theory approaching Vince McMahon. 
uh, Vince McMahon, who does not like uh, gore and violence, uh, he tells Austin Theory, if you don't beat Finn Balor tonight, I'm going to pull a, quote, equalizer out of my desk. I'm going to beat you within an inch of your life. I'm going to knock your teeth out. I'm going to bloody you up, and there's going to be nothing but blood and snot everywhere. That's what Vince said. Then I'm going to take a selfie of your crumpled body and send it to your mother. Does your mother like mutilation? Yeah. We had our annual Martin Luther King Jr. video. The videos are the best thing on the show. The Martin Luther King and the Bobby Lashley versus uh, Brock Lesnar videos. They were the yes. best. So we're, oh, they, yeah, those are the best. Like you're going to talk about the Martin Luther King Day videos, which, you know, the official old white person, you know. I really care about relations because, you know, we have a long Actually, Martin Vince, Luther King Vince video. Actually, Vince Shoot loves and, and considers a hero Martin Luther King Jr., that's great, you know, and maybe you should, you know, that, again, story for a different day, but, you know, your actions and how you run your business and some of the people that you've pushed and some of the things that you've done and overseen actually tell well, more Well, they did go right from that to plug in the Saudi show. Exactly. But anyway. Well, there you go. Austin Theory beat Finn Balor clean in the middle of the ring with his finish. Yeah. Uh, then we had a Rhea Ripley interview. You throw that Irish man on the pile. He's lost everything now that we've got a Damien and a Priest. His gimmick's gone. The whole deal is gone. Rhea Ripley versus Nikki Ash didn't happen. Uh, uh, Vega and Carmella came out. They distracted Rhea. Nikki beat her up from behind and then walked out, so no match. They are oh, dumb. God. Then we had a, a segment. Wait, hold on. Before you even. Dude, say, I got to get through this before I'm Alicia I'm sorry, comes but on. Zelina and Carmella come out there, and Zelina is bashing Nikki Ash like an idiot. She's supposed to be the new heel in this. The other two heels are making fun of her. And then Zelina is making fun of Rhea Ripley for not being able to, on her own, win the tag titles, which made absolutely no sense. Stupid. Omos defeated Reggie. Reggie wanted advice. The advice was to stay low. Like an idiot, he went high. He was caught. He was choke slammed. He was pinned in 30 seconds by, hey, better 30 seconds than four minutes. We had a Maurice and Beth Phoenix face to face where obviously Miz came out. He had tried to attack Edge. Maurice then whacked Beth Phoenix with her purse, knocked her out. They go up the ramp. She reveals there's a brick in her purse. Old school, simple, cowardly heels. I was fine with this, and Maurice was good in this segment. We had Street Profits, Dominic and Ray versus Ziggler, Robert Roode, Apollo, and Commander Aziz. Eight minutes. Four minutes was on television because we had a long commercial. Match was fine, and the whole thing was a build for the baby faces winning, and then Ray and Dominic threw the Street Profits over the top rope. They all had a laugh, and then Ray threw his son over the top rope. They all had a laugh. That's your Royal Rumble build, everybody. Uh, Buy your tickets now. At Alexa Bliss segment, it was dumb. You know, she had to do word association. Every word she associated with Lily. Finally, the guy goes, imaginary. And she gets all mad and he leaves. But then she calmed down. So I'm hoping the storyline is she's being healed and will come back as a pro wrestler. And not... The old Elixir with the doll and everything like that. And finally, Lashley and Seth Rollins in the main event went to a 13-minute disqualification when the Hurt Business just ran in after 13 minutes. Lashley beats him up, and then Rollins got super kicked by the Usos. Guess they figured, oh, we can give everyone a horrible DQ because we're going to have the Usos here on this show. And, uh... The only thing I got to say before the break is, what's with Lashley's new move where he puts the dude on his shoulders like a, a Samoan drop, and then he runs headfirst into the post and they fall down? He's done it two weeks now. It's ridiculous. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Hey, girl. How was your New Year's? Oh, it was so much fun. Brooks and I put our boots on, and we did a little Texas two-step. Oh, Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not like that. Daddy, these girls are so ew. Um, who are you? I'm Wendy Chu. And why are you looking at me like a ham sandwich? Wendy who? Ham sandwich? Wendy Chu? Then it ends. Bro, that was like easily a thousand times better than what they did. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, 
the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.